Hello, welcome to lesson three of the AQS Let's Quilt series, and this is a class for beginners. We're coming to you from Paducah, Kentucky, home of the American Quilter Society and Quilt USA. Today's lesson is going to be on putting our blocks together. From last week's lesson, you should have cut all of your strips. So today we're going to do a little sewing and we're going to make the blocks. We appreciate the sponsors who help bring this program to you. So we're going to begin with just a short word from a couple of those sponsors. Scissor Man here, founder of Fomori Cutlery. Chances are, if you're watching this, you're a needle artist. And needle artists like yourself from around the world have trusted the Fomori brand as their preferred cutting instruments for the past 20 years. To learn more, go to famcut.com. We're going to begin the lesson today talking about how to get a fourth of an inch seam allowance. And there actually are three different ways that you can do that. Uh, I've already told you about the fourth of an inch foot, or you, some of the sewing machines have a setting on the machine that is for a fourth of an inch seam allowance, and it moves your needle. If your machine does not have a fourth of an inch foot or you don't have that setting on your machine there's another way that we can do it and that is by taking painters tape and just make a layer of it and I think I used four layers so that it gives you a little bit of a ridge right along this edge and to put that on your machine I'm just going to slide my fourth of an inch in so that I can see that fourth of an inch line on my ruler and I'm going to line it up on the edge of the machine and now I'm just going to lay that fourth of an inch pack of masking tape right there and now I can slide my fabric right along that edge and to just show you how that happens I'm going to just sew these two pieces together and you always do want to do a sample test Okay, we get the presser foot up there. Oh, I want to just give you one more tip before I get started. And that is, I always take a couple pieces of fabric, and I just took two of the squares, and folded them in half so that I can put in here under the presser foot, and I'm going to sew, and, and this, some people call these leaders and enders, and, uh, and so now I have my machine all ready to sew. You don't have to hold any thread if your machine is one, and I have a machine like that where I have to hold the thread to get started or it'll suck that thread right down into the machine. But now I am ready to go to sew this and I'm just gonna slide it up in here and I've got it right here along the edge of that tape. Okay, so now I have another one of those just going to slide it right underneath there and you will be amazed at using those little pieces of fabric at the beginning and the end. You can chain piece a whole bunch of things and if I were doing multiples I would just keep chain piecing and then at the very end I would put this in here and you will save a ton of thread. You know every time you lift your presser foot and you pull that thread out to cut it you're probably going to save that much thread every single time that you start and stop sewing on a new piece. So now all I have to do is lift my presser foot to get my fabric loose, sneak in here to cut, and be sure to cut the one off at the beginning because you'll need that again. And then every once in a while, I'll just come along. You'll see that you'll have a bunch of threads that'll kind of stick out on the ends. You just take your rotary cutter and chop that off and it's like a brand new piece again. Um, but you'll want to use those, those little um, uh, enders so that you have it all set to go for your next sewing. So that's, that's, how we're, uh, that's how you can do it if you have no quarter of an inch foot. So one, the one thing, I had my needle in the needle down position. The one thing that you always want to do when you're ready to cut your thread is to 
bring your needle up. So I'm going to use the setting in this sewing machine. And when I use that setting, I'm going to put my fabric right along the edge of the, of the presser foot. And so this one already I, I put punched in number 06. And that gives me my quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now we're ready to sew. And what are we going to sew? We're going to sew the strips that you put together. And here on the table, I have laid out the first block. This is row one, row two, and row three. And you want to follow the directions and the graphic that's on your handout. And for every single lesson that we're doing, there's a specific handout for each lesson. And you can get that by going to quiltweek.com forward slash let's quilt and um, be able to print out those downloads. So you want to make sure you do that for every single lesson. How do we sew these together? I've already sewn row one. So I'm going to show you because there's a little trick that you need to know about. And that is I'm going to put right sides together. I just want you to know I'm working with half strips just to make it easier for the class today. But you're going to be working with strips that are the full width of the fabric. So I put the right sides together and I'm going to align the edges. One of the things I want to point out to you is you want to let your machine do the work for you. I know sometimes you'll see people will reach behind the machine to pull or they, they have their hands like they're clasped really tight on the, on the side toward you. Um, all you do is guide this sewing machine. The feed dogs, that's the purpose of the feed dogs is to pull that fabric through for you. We're just going to sew. Okay, so I've sewn our first seam and cut off my fabric scrap there. And now we're ready to sew the third strip on. Okay, I sewed this direction on the first seam. I want to turn this around and sew from the other direction to sew the other piece on. Okay, and it's going to be another lavender strip. So I'm going to align it. Now the reason we do that is that sometimes if you just keep sewing one direction, the tension on the thread will sometimes be a little bit tighter from one time to the other. And so this will help keep your pieces so that they'll press nice and straight. So it is important to turn this around and sew from the other direction when you sew on the third piece. You notice that every once in a while I'm going to stop and realign the edge to make sure I have it uh, lined up with the edge of my foot. Okay, so now we have all three pieces sewn together. All right, now the next trick is in pressing your seams. And 
In most cases, we're always going to press toward the darker fabric because then it won't shine through. Sometimes when you have a light fabric like this lavender, uh, sometimes that dark fabric will show right through and you'll be able to see that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to press this strip. Let me just talk a little bit about pressing versus ironing. Pressing is when you set the iron down and let the heat of the iron do the work. Pressing is when we iron shirts and you go in a back and forth motion like this. So we're just going to press and let the iron do the work. I'm using a slightly different iron than I showed you in a previous lesson. Uh, this is a Panasonic iron and it's cordless and I just thought it would be easier to use on the set and exactly what I use at home. And I love to be able to just pick this up and you just have to remember to put it back on the heating element. So we're going to let the iron do the work and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press along the seam line. And then you just have to remember to put that back in the docket when you have that. Um, we press along that seam line because sometimes your thread will kind of bunch up. And I can see I didn't cut my ender off here. Let's get that taken care of. And this just sets those, that seam in there. The thread gets set right into the fabric. And we're all set to go. All right, so now... One of the little hints is that whatever side you want the seam allowance to fall toward, and we said that we we're going to press it toward the dark side. So if I pick this fabric up, and I almost always press from the top, you can see right here that that seam allowance is going to lay that direction. So now I can just take my iron, let it sit right there for a second to press that, and when I'm all done, you can see we have a nice flat seam and it's pressed toward the dark fabric on the back side. So I'm just going to flip it around so I can do exactly that same thing. And that is I want it to lay toward the dark, so I'm going to pick the dark up and press right along that seam allowance. And you see I'm not ironing, I really am just sliding the iron into position so the heat of that iron can do the work. And there we are, we have row two all completely finished. And now, uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to be able to cut these into pieces. And for block A, you're going to be making four blocks. So we need four pieces, four and a half inches wide. The, the strip will be cut in the same width as the previous strips that you, you cut out for the block. So if this was cut four and a half inches, then we're going to slice it into pieces four and a half inches this direction. Okay, so now you notice that I have stood up to be able to do the rotary cutting. And it's important for you to be able to get the right pressure on your blade when you, when you cut. You want to be in a standing position when you're using your rotary cutter. Now, I just want to show you a couple things here where I've laid the ruler. You can see our edge is all jagged here, and we always want to make sure we cut off the edges of the fabric where it's woven more tightly. So I've laid my ruler on the quilt, and I've lined up a line right across the seam line here. Now, this is a fun place for you to check something because this is a finished, it was four and a half inches, and we've used both of those seam allowances. So this should measure four inches from seam to seam, and by gum, it does, doesn't it? Four inches for that lavender piece. All right, so now again, I'm going to position my hand, open my rotary blade, and I'm going to cut and move my hand, and I'm going to cut. So now that's scrap. So now I'm going to flip this around, and at home, I use a smaller uh, rotary cutting mat and I slide the, the mat around, uh, just works better on my table. And, but this go mat being this big is wonderful. Okay, so now I said we're going to cut these four and a half inches. And so you remember I put the tape on here, so you don't want to take that off until you're all done. And again, I'm going to align it on this edge. I'm going to align it on the 
the seam line and I'm going to cut this into four and a half inch strips. I'm lining it here and I'm aligning it here. And you want to do that each time. It's, it's real easy to, to make a wrong cut. And so now there's our four pieces that we need for these four blocks. And this is row one. Okay. Um, how about hearing from a couple more of our sponsors? And we'll be back and I'll be ready to show you how to sew the block together. A machine with endurance is important. That's why I own the Janome Continental M7. Janome, reliability by design. Trust the quality of Coates and Clark threads for all your quilting needs. With over 200 years of commitment to quality, selection, and innovation, Coates and Clark is the thread company trusted for generations. We're back and now we get to sew the blocks together. I have block B laid out here on the cutting mat and I'm going to take row one and row two and flip it over on top of one another. And now I just want to show you one of the things that makes this real easy to sew. Normally when I do um, strip piecing like this where I'm not having to pin anything, you can see how those two seam allowances, let me just pull this back here for a minute. The two seam allowances go in opposite directions. That's why we had you press toward the darker fabric. And so you can butt those two seam allowances and I use my finger as a pin. And now I'm ready to put it underneath the presser foot. And because I have my machine set on the quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to secure that spot and make sure I have everything lined up. And one of the double checks that you can do is before you start sewing, just bring this and, and you can tug on that top fabric and you can feel it lock in right there. So I sewed right up to that joint. All right, now I want to make sure I lock the next one. And so on this one to lock it in, I'm going to pull on the bottom fabric. And again, I'm going to just hold my finger there. That becomes the pin. And trust me, this is a whole lot more accurate than if you tried to stick a pin in there because that tends to want to move the fabric a little bit. And this is a whole lot faster. And now we're going to make sure that we have our ends all lined up here on the corner and I'm ready to finish sewing that seam. Okay, so now I always relay out my, my block when I'm going to get ready to sew on the next one because it would be real easy to pick this up and sew it up here and have it in the wrong place. So I'm going to lay the block down, going to pick up the next row and we're going to do exactly the same thing. The first thing I'll do is to get my seam allowances butted up to one another, align the corners of my block, Something happened right there, and I'm just going to see if I can show you here. The seam allowance right here on the underneath side flipped over. So before you get to that, you just want to double check to make sure this is good and flat as it goes through your machine. One of the things that you want to make sure that you do is make sure that seam is good and flat. And so here I am again, I'm, I'm pulling this bottom one so that I can feel how that nest one right in the other. Okay, so now we are ready to press the block. 
And again, I'm going to take this over here to the ironing board. And I have to tell you, I love being able to have this ironing board right next to me. Is that not handy? And so we're going to set that seam. And we're going to set the other seam. And I really just want to show you, do you see how this looks like it's not even right here? That's really why you want to set that thread right into the seam because let me press that, set that in with the iron. And now see how nice and flat that lays? You want to do that setting of the seam before you press this block open. Again, I want the seam allowance to go toward the middle. So I'm going to hold it up and press that seam. And you see that I'm pressing from the top. And we'll do the same thing. I'm going to press toward the middle. And the reason I press from the top is because if you press from the bottom, and I'm sure if you've made any blocks and you did press from the bottom side, it's real easy to get a pleat like on the front. Now that I've pressed it from the front, I'm going to come back and just double secure those seam allowances in the right direction. And now I don't have to touch them again until I'm ready I've have these blocks all sewn together. Now we have block B all put together. You need to make eight of block B. Okay, so block C is, uses several different fabrics. That's where we bring in the dark turquoise fabric. So your assignment for next week is to sew all 16 of the blocks. That's four of block A, eight of block B, four of block C. Before we go, we have a couple more sponsors to hear from. Tracy's Tables has all of your custom sewing table needs. Visit tracystables.com to see the complete line of unique tables, carts, and shelves. And all of Tracy's Tables are made in the USA. Welcome back. And before you go today, I want to tell you how to register for these wonderful prizes. If you will go to quiltweek.com forward slash let's quilt run those letters all together let's quilt you will find several things you will find the handout for today's lesson you will find a link to go register for the wonderful prizes from our sponsors and you will also find a special offer to become an aqs member and uh, it's a reduced price and a special gift so you don't want to miss out on that and when we come back next week, we'll be sewing these blocks all together. Thanks for joining me today and we'll see you next week.